crypto market is moving. We are above 6% for the day and Bitcoin right now is 22,600. So we haven't actually seen a lot of these assets doing big numbers in a single day. We just saw like Hedra doing this. It actually went much higher than that. It went up to 0 0.085 and then retraced. Now, this is the market which we were talking about. Right now, you get the idea that the market does show you a dead wave one, a dead wave two, and it's going for another run. And if that is true, then you are going to observe the altcoins doing exactly the same thing here, which is going to be 3540x. Now, that's just the average. So some assets may do 20 and some assets may do 400. So as we know, small micro nano caps, they're going to do 400. The big large cap, they may do 20 to 40x. Most likely that's going to be the scenario. Now put that into practice here in the market. You're like, okay, there is a lot of opportunities right now. Yes, Bitcoin actually went above this. And we need to understand right now, when you get news like this, there will be confusion. An uh, individual like Peter Thiel dropping an asset. Now, they actually sold in a lot of profit. You need to understand that. Yes, the timing does not look great. It does actually see like you have opportunity and this is not the right time. But look at the other side, the macro. Now it makes sense. The rates are up. The market is down. They need liquidity. So it actually really makes a lot of sense. Now, what about XRP? This is going to be a big question for us because right now we are trying to break through this resistance, which is there from quite some time. Now, if we are looking at the macro, again, that act as a resistance. So for us, it really means that XRP need to break through this level. Yes, short term, we have done quite nicely following the market, but right now, we have not yet broken to the upside. Now, we have a lot of different assets which are doing that right now. We are going through and hitting these targets. Say, render, it actually did that. XRP is breaking on the short term. Yes, we agree on that. And we are waiting for the macro to break out. Whereas we actually saw like, you know, H bar breaking higher and hitting those targets. Now, at the same time, if you're following the market, you also know that H bar on the fundamental side is getting more attention, more strength. You know, it actually went up to 8,000, I think, transaction per second. Here was, yeah, a record new throughput all-time highs of 8,000 transactions per second. That is actually huge. And it just processed 323 million transactions, which is actually great. Now, that's just the fundamentals. Now, it's not only one asset in the market which actually does this kind of thing, right? You actually have a lot more different assets in the market, which actually show you, like, I'm doing this, I'm breaking higher, I'm moving further, I'm hitting my targets, right? So if you are in the market, you do have a lot of opportunity. Why am I highlighting this? All coin market is actually going to do something like this, which is going to be a generational opportunity for most of us. Last time, remember when we actually did this run up from the bottom till the top, we actually went up like 45x. Then yeah, we had the standard deviation, which went way above that. But being conservative, we'll say, okay, this channel is like 40x and we are starting to bounce. So. If that 40x is coming, you really don't want to miss that. Welcome to the Scientific Investor family, where the normal retail guys become the next top 10% of this world. Now, we've been talking about this new money coming into the market, even in the last video, before this crazy rally started in the last 24 hours. We were talking about this time for action. Bulls are entering. Now, it's not just a random time for action. We were literally taking action, right? In the SA family, we've been dropping calls. We were having breakouts. We entered different trades based on different breakouts. Now, it does actually make sense to understand, yes, these breakouts are giving opportunities. And, you know, when you are in a bull mode, if you have enough risk appetite, now we can go for a little bit leverage trades, 
we did that and we went for it. Now, when we went for it, not everyone has the same risk appetite. Some has higher risk appetite and they, you know, have higher ROI. The risk to reward is based on how much risk you are willing to take. So even though you are entering the same trade at the same price and exiting at the same price, you may get higher reward. But remember, if the trade goes against you, you lose. So always keep your risk and your reward on the balanced, in a clear balance so that you actually know where you are going, what you're going to do. Because right now, it's not just going to be one asset or one opportunity in the market. You're going to see a lot more opportunities coming in, which means you don't have to take too much risk on one asset. You can actually literally rotate just $500 through different trades. Yeah, it may take like maybe three months for you to make that a big amount, but Literally, this is the time frame for next three months, next six months. The market right now shows you I'm breaking through and I'm moving to the upside. Now, we talked about this all the way through here when we were getting this bullish divergence. Now, the bullish divergence is still existing in the market. But right now, we don't have to look at that because we already got a break to the upside. So the RSI went up. So yes, we were a little bit too early and we got the FTX collapsed between that time, but right now things look different. This is the range where we dropped in November with the FTX drop, but right now the prices are above that. So for the Bitcoin, it already erased that range. And right now when you're looking at the altcoins, it's breaking to the upside, trying to test that FTX collapse range. But based on this, the price is going to go much higher, which is going to be another 50% to the upside. Now, that will equate to a lot of these assets doing 50%, but some assets doing 100, 200, 500% run-ups, while the major assets do 50. So in here, you are literally observing the market doing big numbers and you should take benefit of that because yeah xrp we are waiting here we know the sec case is still there we expect it to be over within the mid this year may june by this year may june we expect that to end but what if it actually goes a month more than that that's going to be a big question here imagine the bull run is starting now in next three to four months that's going much higher the market is traveling 40x SEC case is not getting solved. So what happens with XRP? We won't actually see the gigantic momentum for sure, but we will join the market like last time. So if you're expecting that $30 mark for wave two, it may end up at $10. We don't know, right? We'll have to see how much new money comes into the market and how much of that actually is being focused on XRP because we are not watching a breakout here. Yes, the RSI does suggest us we are going to break to the upside. Once we break and get the retest, now that's a shot. Based on all these breakout calls, we actually understand that RSI does show you things way earlier than it actually happens. So if you have patience, that amount of patience, RSI is already showing you on a weekly that we broke higher, we are moving to the upside, all those good, great things. So it's a weekly candle. We discussed in the last video how much patience you actually need. So when you're on a three-day chart, this is what you're seeing. You already broke to the upside, you retested, you bounced. That means most likely in next 30 to 40 days, most likely, the RSI suggests that we're going to break this to the upside. Now, the primary question becomes like you come back into the market and you want to literally look at how much volume is actually going in to XRP. Right now, compared to Ether, it's nothing, right? We're close to a billion. Ether right now is like 7 billion. So if you want to actually see this going close to that, that's when you can actually see, okay, there is a lot of money coming back into the market, which looks like 2017, which looks like the early days of crypto, right? That focus and attention based on utilities coming back. That is something which we all want to see. But while we wait for that, you also have to understand like, you know, the fundamentals are still there. A lot of people do understand that they are here for the long run. They are 
taking it out of the exchanges. Why is that? Because they don't really want to sell that asset at this price. So they are removing that into the wallets. It can be any different wallet, ledger, whatever, but they're not keeping it on the exchange, which does mean they're not here for the short term. They are long term holders. Again, that means price appreciation. Now, when we reach this 28 to 30,000 range, it's going to be a major resistance which we are going to face. That level should be a take profit. If you are trading altcoins right now, you need to focus on what Bitcoin price is. By the time it reaches 28 to 30, take your profits, wait. Then once you get the confirmation of we are breaking to the upside, that's okay to go into a trade or leverage or whatever you want to do. But understand, before that, it's going to create a lot of volatility, panic again in the market by that time. So make sure you understand what the market is showing you. It can move upside. Great. It is not bad. Falling wedge, breaking to the upside is actually a bullish reversal signal. And both the RSI and price agrees on that. Now, if you go back on a daily chart, and then put on the 200 day moving average, we can actually say that, okay, the price broke above that, it retested that and bounced. But one thing which concerns me here is that the price and the moving average usually retraces back when the 50 crosses the 200 day moving average. So you may have a month or two by which the 50 day moving average will be crossing the 200 day moving average. We'll remove all these lines just to get the clarity on that. You come back down and you see this. When we cross to the downside, we almost hit the bottom, we reverse. When we cross to the upside, again, we took that top and came back lower. So it can be a minor correction, but still imagine the price dropping from 52 to 40 or 39. It does not actually really look like a minor one, right? Drop of $13,000. So right now, if you put that perspective here, you may actually run up to 30 and then drop back to 25. That's going to be a big possibility here in the market. And that may actually shake the market. You may actually see a lot of guys coming back in the market, giving a lot of panic, you know, fear, that kind of stuff. But when the greed is here, the pendulum is swinging from the greed end. Right. That's actually something which we all want to keep in mind because this only moves from the fear to greed. And when it is moving into the greed area, you don't really want to miss because after that, it's going back to that fear mode. But this three months, this six months, this duration is something which you really want to look forward to because we waited for like two, three years after accumulating, going through, you know, a lot of different things. Now. It's time for you to look for your targets, exits, position yourself in a way you know which assets you hold and you know the targets for each asset you hold. Now, that being said, most of us do hold at least 10, 15, 20 assets. Now, if it's way more than that, now it's going to be really hard for you to keep a note on all of these. So make sure you know what you're holding. Now, if it's like, you know, a small, tiny, teeny bit of position, which you just put in on a, like a mem coin and you really don't care, then it's okay. But all the other major assets, the long-term backs should be accounted for. You should actually know how many assets you have and what ratio of your portfolio is in that asset and what's the target for that asset. And that's why we all be saying, make sure you understand what the market suggests. If you know the medium term target, you know the long term target. Now we are taking profits before it actually hits that target. Here, while we were highlighting the LC uh, LCX update, was like a 100% move for R1 and R2. Right now, when we actually see that the price is hitting that R1, which is like 100% move, you took profit. That's actually a good thing to do, right? So when SI family actually get these calls, you're not acting on each and every calls because you are literally there to trade one or two at a time, not 20 trades at a time, right? So there will be 10 calls, you choose three and you are riding that till the target. Fine, once you take the profit, now you are going for the new calls. That's how you actually rotate this. So make sure if you're entering on these calls, you know you are entering on this asset for that target on that time frame. If you enter on a chart of three day, 
you are looking for the target on three day, not four hour. That makes sense, right? So guys, if you received value for your time, please do hit that like and subscribe button and expect the market to do wonders in the next three to five months. We'll be here updating you through the days as we go. We'll hit resistance. We'll break targets for sure. We'll go through all of that together. So that's it for today, guys. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye-bye.